All right, in section 4.4, .4, we're going to factor uh, quadratic expressions. This is basically FOIL backwards. So if we know how to FOIL, we can uh, do it backwards. And that's what this is all about. So if I have x plus 3 times x plus 4, I FOIL this together to get x times x is x squared. This times this would be 4x inside. 3x and this times this is 12. <clears throat> the middle terms go together and I get x squared uh, plus 7x <clears throat> plus 12. So that's FOIL. So when I go this way, I am FOILing. And then I'm going to go back this way, which would be this guy. So I'm going to do FOIL <coughs> backwards. I'm going to take a quadratic in standard form and change it into a quadratic in factored form. So standard form, factored form, factored form, standard form. So I need to be able to switch between the two of these. So when you break things up um, in math with multiplication, we're breaking it up into its factors, the things that make it by multiplying things together. So example one factor. We have x squared plus 13x plus 42. So I make two parentheses. I know that x times x makes x squared. And then I have to think about what multiplies to make 42 and then what add and subtracts together to make the 13 in the middle. So the first thing that comes to mind is 6 and 7. So 6 and 7 plus 6 plus 7. Now I'm going to do the uh, Officer Bell half donut trick. Af Officer Bell is a resource officer here at our school and I'm going to make a half donut and the question is where is the other half of the donut? Does that look like a half of a donut? Yes. It's in his stomach, right? So 6x would be 6x, 7x would be 7x. So 6x and 7x would be 13x when these get added together. So first would be the x squared. The last would be this, and then the inside and the outside multiplied together and added would make 13. So the answer is not the orange here, the answer is the blue. Example number two. Example two, we're going to factor this, and it is x squared plus 4x minus 5. So I make my two sets of parentheses, put an x in each one. And this one's a lot easier. 42 has several factors like 1 times 42, 2 times 21, 3 times 14. But 6 and 7 is the one that I want because when I add 6 and 7, I get the 13. When I multiply 6 and 7, I get the 42. So uh, 5 is much easier to work with because not only is 5 odd, but 5 is a prime number. So. 5 times 1 is 5. Now I need 4 in the middle. If I add these, I get 6. But if I subtract them, I get 4. This needs to be a positive 5 and then a negative 1. So then I can check it with the half donut. So 5x and then this times this would be negative 1x. 5 and negative 1 make the 4x. And then this times this is this. This times this is that. So that's how this works. All right. Now we're going to kick it up a karaoke notch because that's you know kind of the way math is. We got to take it up a notch here, ratchet it up. Um, example, and that's always a scary thing when you, we, ra we ratchet up the the old math the math problems here. We're going to put a number in front on this one. So instead of having a as one, which makes life easy, a is now two. So I have to make the two x squared. Well, luckily. Luckily, 2 is a prime number, so I can make it 2x and 1x, or just x. So this times this makes the front. Now, 2 and 3 um, makes a difference where you place the, the 2 and the 3, or 6 and 1, because you have to match it up with this 2 here. So I'm going to do it the wrong way, and then flip it and show you how to do it the right way. If I put, if I put 3 over here and 2 here, I did this with pencil. Um, so if I match these up, I get 6x. If I match these up, I get 2x. Well, 6x and 2x won't make 7x. It could make um, 8x or it could make 
4x, but it, it can't make a uh, 7. So these need to be switched. So you, you, you write lightly in pencil, and then you flip the pencil over and hopefully have a good eraser. I'm always a, a fan of the twisty erasers. Those are my, my favorite erasers on mechanical pencils. Anyway, so these need to go the other direction. This needs to be a 3 here and a 2 here. Now, see when I match these up, I get 4 x squared and here I get 3x squared. So I get 4x and 3x makes the 7 plus and plus. And let's half donut this one. So I get 3x and I get 4x when I multiply these together. 3x and 4x makes 7x. Then those like a half donut? It does. Mm, yummy. And those are like the sprinkles on it or something. <coughs> All right, number, and again, this is the answer. Uh, example four, factor. And this one's going to be 6x squared plus 13x minus 28. Now this one here is not a prime number, uh, so we have we have choices for this. And just for the, the sake of speed, it's 3x and 2x. It could be 6x and 1x, but you, you have to, you know, six. there's only one unique answer to these. There's only one answer if you factor completely. Um, factor completely. Lee. So if you always factor completely, there's only one unique answer to these. Uh, let's see. Now we have to have a negative back here, so it has to be plus and minus. Let's match up. Let's match up the seven. Seven times four makes twenty-eight. So that's twenty-one. Do you see the twenty-one there? And then this would be eight. So twenty-one needs to be positive. So there's a positive twenty-one, <clears throat> and then minus eight. Do you see that is eight? That times that's eight. So twenty-one minus 8 is 13. 21 minus 8 is 13. This times this makes this. The way I'm attacking these is kind of a guess and check type situation. Um, I'm, I know I'm picking this that works. And I may have to change it because it's, uh, it's a composite number instead of prime. And then I have factors of 28. There's more than just 7 and 4. Um, it could have been 2 and, and 14. But you, know, you guess and check and try and, and see how it works. But you always use FOIL to check your work to make sure that you are correct. Okay, this one has a GCF to it, greatest common factor. Uh, 7x squared minus 14x minus 56. So not a positive 56, but a minus 56. So I get out the old white out here. So minus 56. And we notice, and we actually always look for this, um, the greatest common factor in the terms here, 7 is a factor in each one. So it's 7 uh, comes out of all the terms. They're all divisible by 7. Not x, because there's no x back here, but just, just 7. So I divide by 7. 7 divided in there is 1, so it's x squared. 7 divided in here would be 2, so it's minus 2x. 7 does go into 56 8 times. 7 times 8 is 56. Now, this factors a second time, because we're going to always factor completely. And let's see, what does this give me? Uh, this is now a lot easier because I don't have these extra big numbers here. So it's 4 and 2. Um, 4 and 2 differ by 2. The 4 needs to be a negative number, and the 2 needs to be a positive number. Yay, us, go. All right, so now we're going to move on to example 6. Example 6 is another GCF, but it looks a little bit differently. So example 6, we got a GCF here. And this time I'm only have two terms, 2x squared minus 10x. Now there's an x in common between the two of them. So if you don't see that, let me, let me break this down here. So this is 2 times x times x minus... Uh, 2 times 5 times x. So x times x is x squared times the 2, be 2x squared. 2 times 5 is 10 and then an x. And then you can literally see what's in common. So I get out a highlighter here and you're like, oh, 2 is in common. It's a common factor. And then that's not the greatest common factor because there's also an x in common. So we pull the 2x out to the front and then you can literally see what's left over, the things that I didn't highlight. So that's x minus 5. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 5 is the 10x. So I took out the <coughs> greatest common factor here. Basically, I did the distributive property backwards. Um, 
that's a lot harder to write out than foil backwards that I did earlier. Remember when I wrote out foil backwards? See, that's foil backwards. Um, this would be the dis distributing backwards, and I, th that's too many letters to write backwards. It would confuse my poor math brain. All right, uh, example seven. Example seven is the difference of two perfect squares. So it's the difference of squares. And we have a squared minus b squared. That's the, when we say difference, we mean subtracting and squares, those are perfect squares. In number form, your perfect squares are uh, one, four, nine, 16, 25, six times six is 36, 49, uh, eight times eight is 64, 81, 100, 10 times 10, uh, dot, 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 because you could do this forever. So those are all your perfect squares. And so the difference of two perfect squares always factors into the same thing. It's A and A, and B and B, and that, and then it, one needs to be positive, one needs to be negative, because there's no middle part. So when I multiply this and this together, here I'll do the half donut thing here. When I multiply this and this together, I get AB, and when I multiply this and this together, I get negative AB. And notice they cancel out, there's no AB term, but we know that this times this makes this, this times this makes this, and the middle part cancels out. So this always factors into the same thing. It's a factoring pattern. So we can do these all day long. We can do x squared minus 25 would be x and x, five and five, ones plus and ones minus. And you can even add numbers to the front of it. So you could do 49x squared minus 36 is equal to 7x and 7x and minus 6 and plus 6. So you can put the plus first or the plus second. I, I guess I was feeling kind of a positive here and a little negative here. You, know, you can switch the order um, because the multiplication is commutative, right? 2 times 3 is 3 times 2. And the last example, yeah, I'll squeeze it on this piece of paper here, save myself a piece of paper. So example eight, so we're going to factor this one, and we're going to look for a GCF first, 2x squared minus 200. So the first thing we notice here is that there's a GCF. You actually always, always, always look for a GCF first, a common factor to take out before you factor it a second time, because it makes the factoring so much easier. Um, like on this problem here, when we took the 7 out first, it made this factoring so much easier. And now it's completely factored because the 7 is pulled clear to the front. So what we need to do is we need to take a 2 out of this. That's the common factor. And then x plus 10, x minus 10. So 10 is, or 100 is 10 times 10. And then we get negative 10, positive 10, makes no 10, no 10 x's in the middle or any x's in the middle. This times this makes this. This is the correct answer here. So I factored it twice, took out the common factor, and then factored it again. All right, so hopefully this is helpful to review. And now there's audio with this thing. Yay, audio.